Get NFL Sunday ticket at its lowest price ever and watch every game every Sunday. Take your NFL experience to even greater heights with NFL Sunday Ticket Deluxe, which gives you Red Zone, bringing you the final yards from around the league along with minute-to-minute -minute NFL fantasy updates. Call us at 601-8992 to sign up today. Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned into NB12, the weekend edition. Coming up tonight in news, NB12 is on the ground in Florida as Cuban protesters urge the Bahamian government to come clean on claims of abuse and torture. Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell is also in Miami. Hear what he had to say in response. Another busy weekend for Police Plus. A local beauty prepares to hit the international stage. We've got those stories and so much more coming up. I'm Bonnie Toot and the Weekend Edition starts now. Tonight, we've been hearing about the allegations of abuse of Cuban detainees at the Carmichael Road Detention Center for months now. And this week, we finally saw that controversial report that details what allegedly happened. But we haven't actually heard from any of the people who claim they were abused. That is, until now. Nakia DeVoe was in Miami for the arrival of some of the released Cubans and filed this report. An emotional reunion here at the Democracy Movement headquarters in Miami, where one of the Cuban detainees who was granted asylum by the U.S. was reunited with family and friends. He says he has no problems with the Bahamas or Bahamian people, but with the officials who he alleges brutalized him and his colleagues who were in the Carmichael Road Detention Center. Golpe. Pata, gas pimiento. Ya cuando estaban desmayados. Then when they're uh, almost uh, uh, bal, fainted, uh, almost fainted. Bal de water. Water, buckets, uh, spray, uh, throwing water to them. Ya se despertaban. They would wake up. Pal de patas más. Continue to kick them again. Más pimiento. More pepper gas. Al bel que ya no le podían dar más porque lo que le faltaba era matarlo. Y estaba amaneciendo y, está, y, to, uh, eh, y estaba amaneciendo. Eh, pararon. Randy Rodriguez emotionally recounted the alleged incidents as his wife, Miss Lady Oliveira, and two sons, 14-year-old Landy Rodriguez and 4-year-old Leandy Rodriguez, sat nearby. After the democracy movement, the human rights group revealed more allegations, including the alleged sexual abuse of female detainees. We asked Rodriguez's wife if she had experienced any such abuse. She told us no, but said she witnessed lots of it. Several members of the Spanish and English-speaking media hurled questions at Randy Rodriguez, who passionately insisted that the details of the report were all true. He also insisted that, despite what is being said, the video purporting to show Defense Force officers abusing detainees at the Carmichael Road Detention Center is not a reenactment, but the actual events. And he says he was there. He also said that the guards shown in the video are Bahamian. I'm asking him if he saw the video and whether he knows whether that video is genuine or not. The video is genuine. Okay. Was he there at the time of that video? Okay. Yeah. Estaba tú allí en el momento de ese video? Sí. Estabas allí? Sí. Now, Democracy Movement spokesman Ramon Sanchez says that if the details in that report are not enough to convince Prime Minister Perry Christie to admit that there was abuse at the Carmichael Road Detention Center, then those testimonies should be. He wrote a letter to the Prime Minister, which he wanted to deliver to Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell today here at the Bahamian Consulate in the Ingram Building right behind me. But by the time the group was ready to take a caravan with placards blasting the Bahamas and the foreign affairs minister to protest outside of the consulate, neither Mitchell nor Bahamian counsel Ricardo Trico were there. But Sanchez read the letter to members of the media. 
Honorable Prime Minister, because we are people of faith in search of the truth, we come to you after the many sad reports that are now coming out publicly vindicating our claims of gross human rights violations in the hope that you will set aside your defensive attitude and deploy a true will to address those gross human rights violations being committed against undocumented migrants detained under your jurisdiction. We did, however, catch up with Mitchell at his hotel in downtown Miami. He was here meeting with staff at the consulate this morning. Mitchell says that despite the leaked report and the testimonies of members of the Rodriguez family, he has gotten no negative feedback outside of Miami. I don't think anybody even pays attention to it. I keep saying this has no traction beyond Broward County. None. So and our image hasn't been at all tarnished? Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. And, and, I mean, that's my, that's my view, that's my estimation. Uh, there are some implications when our forces are alleged to have been involved because, you know, we have international obligations uh, and agreements with various countries and with, uh, uh, in the United Nations context. We also asked the Foreign Affairs Minister what the government's next move is now that the report has been released. He said he didn't want to comment specifically on the report, but did say that what was released in the media may not be what it seems. Reporting from Miami, Florida for NB12, I'm Nakia DeVoe. The Free National Movement has also been very vocal about abuse allegations in recent weeks. Tonight, another political party is weighing in. The Democratic National Alliance has labeled the leaked report an embarrassment to the country. The report, dated July 19, 2013, revealed that Cuban detainees were allegedly severely beaten at the Carmichael Road Detention Center for almost two hours after they attempted to escape in May. DNA leader Bramble McCartney says if it did in fact happen, that is unfortunate. However, he's not completely convinced the report is legitimate, given a video initially circulated turned out to be fake. There was a report put forward. Again, we, we need to determine the legitimacy of that report. Um, there were photos. We need to determine the legit legitimacy of those photos. Um, uh, quite frankly, they have not been determined. As an attorney, if I'm speaking almost from an attorney's point of view, you don't make calls or come to certain conclusions uh, until you have everything before you. McCartney suggested that the public should wait for investigations to be completed before drawing conclusions, noting that the Bahamas government does not condone abuse. However, he says if the final report reveals that Cuban detainees were abused, those responsible should pay the price. And if there are a few rogue officers that are involved, I would like to see them brought to justice uh, because it is certainly an embarrassment to the, to the country as a whole. It's an embarrassment to us individually, uh, and that is not the um, position we as Bahamians and as I said, the, the government ought to condone. Though he fears some damage has already been done to this country's reputation as a result of Cuban protests in Florida, the DNA leader says he does not think Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell should ever meet with the democracy movement. They are continuing with that type of um, um, stance against the Bahamas, um, which is not good for us. We, we are a tourist country, we are a tourist nation, and that hinders and that deters persons from coming to, the, to, to, our, to, our, to our islands. Um, we certainly don't wish for persons to believe that we are that, that kind of people, that we abuse people, because that's not the, the Bahamian people. A young woman is dead tonight following a dramatic high-speed chase and shootout that ended in front of the South Beach Police Station. It's the second murder in less than 24 hours. Head of the Central Detective Unit, Superintendent Paul Roll says a man driving a blue Honda Accord and two female passengers had just left a wedding reception on East Street around 2 p.m. today and were driving along Sequoia Avenue when the occupants of a Red Fort Explorer pulled up alongside them and opened fire, spraying the Honda Accord with bullets. Continued driving to the police station where the, this Ford Explorer continued following him and discharging shots at the vehicle until they got here. And the vehicle um, 
eventually pulled back before when he, I suppose he realized they were coming to the station. The woman sitting in the back seat of the car was shot multiple times. The driver of the Honda and the woman sitting in the front seat were not harmed. The victim, believed to be between ages 20 and 30, died in the passenger seat of the car just a few feet away from the entrance of the police station. Roll says police have no suspects in this incident, which brought this year's murder count to 75. Uh, we appeal to members of the public who may have information with this uh, latest homicide to uh, give us a call so we can uh, act on it and try to bring this to some resolution. Just last night, gunman shot and killed a Nassau village man outside his home. Police say the victim, believed to be in his late 20s, arrived at his William Street home at around 9.15 last night and was parking his vehicle when two gunmen ambushed him, shooting him multiple times. The shooters then reportedly fled the area on foot. The unidentified victim was taken to hospital in a private vehicle. However, he succumbed to his injuries a short time later. At this point, authorities say they have no suspects and no motive, adding it's unclear if last night's killing was gang-related. Meantime, Commissioner of Police Allison Greenslade says concerns surrounding the electronic monitoring system must be resolved soon. He told MB12 he was not informed the man found dead in South Beach Canals had been stationary for one week, even though he was wearing an ankle bracelet, adding the Ministry of National Security is not satisfied with how that matter was handled. However, Greenslate says the technology is not the problem. The electronic monitoring is, is an effective technical solution. I was a part of the project, and as a techie person myself, I'm fully conversant with how it works. So the technology is really not the issue. Whether it's effective or whether it works is not the issue. The issue is more implementation, monitoring, and issues around how limits are set. That's the big issue. He says there have been issues in the past when people wearing ankle bracelets went undetected. Yeah, there are times when people have been able uh, for short periods of time to defeat to some extent. I'm not sure to say defeat, but have been able um, to do things uh, without being monitored properly. Um, of course, we would note a flag and we would know that something was not right. And, and could respond to it effectively. And we have, in fact, in cases like that, revoked the, the bail, meaning we've arrested people and they've gone back to prison. Coming up after the break, a top religious leader condemns gay marriage. Plus, is government close to reaching an agreement with Bahamar? The details of those stories and more when MB12 returns.